in the last three years, we've been really trying to get the message out that QSIS, QC, is really a software company. And QSIS, the products you see on our booth, including the new uh, Dell server here, really it's not about the hardware, it's really about the software itself. And so when we talk about software-based DSP control and video processing, we really mean that all of that processing is up in the software. So it's more than just a user interface that we are all familiar with in QSIS Designer or you know, any of those user interfaces. Yeah, that's important, and, and we don't want to you know, push that aside. But what we mean is the actual real-time processing engine is up in software. And as far as today's time, we're the only company in the industry that can claim that. Uh, it's more than firmware. It's portable to many different environments at the hardware layer. And most importantly, again, it's a, it's a separate from the hardware. So this is the announcement, really, that, and we want to reiterate that QSIS is an operating system. It's one of the first that you see, I think you'll see in the rest of the industry, and we expect to see our competitors and even other categories of products go this way. This is a layer look at a, a software layer. And this is how IT and software people think. Uh, and so this is something I think new to our industry as well, that we're going to have to start getting our arms wrapped around. And this is looking at stacks in the R12 model and other models like the OSI model. This is a, a very simplified version of our QSIS operating system model. Uh, the very physical layer, that's the hardware there, is Intel. So we targeted that generic x86 architecture, the same architecture that runs your Mac or your what have you. We have products here that have Atoms and i7s and Xeon processors. These Dell cores are, are Xeon processor based. And then above that, Linux. That's an off-the-shelf uh, kernel.org Linux kernel. It's the most recent patch generation of it. And then we've added real-time extensions to it. And that means something. That's the special sauce that we do. The real-time extensions take an operating system that would normally run asymmetrically, like think your email. You don't care when exactly it gets there in time. You send an email out, it just shows up whenever, within maybe a few seconds. That won't do for AV, now will it? We need to know when things show up and how and, and in what order audio, video, the human brain is much faster than an email server. And so to change that Linux operating system to become a true real-time operating system is a big feat. And then right above that is our ability to take the network drivers, the standard Intel network interface cards that are in any of these products, usually integrated on the motherboard from Intel or Dell or whomever, and, and extend those into the real-time space. So you hear a lot about you know, time synchronous, uh, time sensitive networking. Well, we ha we got that. Uh, that's part of the standards based uh, networking scheme that is QLAN, as well as AS67, and probably some future software based mechanisms to do uh, audio and video and control transport. And then finally, we get to what we think of as AV people, which is. How do you do the auto mixing? How do you do your echo canceling? How do you do your routing and, and mixing and all of those things? And that is the application layer that we've also developed. And that's what you primarily interact with with QSIS Designer when you touch our, our products and look at how to design a system. So that's really what QSIS is. You can think of us as a operating system vendor, QSC. A little historical context here. You know, we all knew about analog processing, and then later digital signal processing became the norm. Well, we progressed to the point that somebody very smart decided to put an RJ45 on the darn thing, and that became the network-based DSP concept. And you know, we did that too. We had Basis and some other products, but you know, that generation of products started in about 2000 to 2002. Interestingly, that is exactly where the industry at large has stopped. We would rather do mainstream technology and go after looking at something that our IT friends can really get their arms wrapped around. And so we came out with QSIS in 2008. But you know, there's this thing called adoption curves and trying to get people that are used to one paradigm to be able to embrace a new paradigm. So we kind of had a Trojan horse operation going. The QSIS products you saw come out in 2008, they just looked like a DSP, didn't they? And they still do. We still have products that look like DSPs. Well, guess what? They're all the same thing as what you see on that desk over there. They're still Intel processors. They're still very powerful computers. 
And so we just wrapperize them in a way that our industry could understand. But we think the time has finally come that we think our industry is matured enough and we have talked long enough about AVIT convergence and it's time to move on with things. And so this is what the technology announcement really embodies, that we have now decoupled the software from the hardware and that now we can target any off-the-shelf technology like a Dell server or even think downstream, small, you know, Dell rack mount PCs even, we can run QSIS on. And so this is the technology announcement of our capability. So this is two generations now ahead of where we see the industry still stuck. So I'll spare you reading the slide. You guys can read it while I talk a little bit here. But there's one up here that I think is probably the most important. And it's actually related to what I was just saying about IT. We have to realize that our IT customer is going to become more and more influential and have more and more of a role in the buying cycles that we all deal with, whether we're a manufacturer, a consultant, an integrator, or even the end user themselves. And so that simplicity and familiarity of that Dell server means a lot. So this is, again, to reiterate and underscore, you know, this is what we think of as AV people. We come into you know, a building and we talk to our end users and, and we think of all these room types. You know, you talk to the average corporate integrator, meeting room spaces, they think of room types. And they're little islands and we think of them as sort of insular little system designs on our line diagrams and our drawing packages. They look something like this, a local processor, a switcher, you know, a control processor maybe, or maybe it's built into the AV switcher. But at the end of the day, it's still an island system. You might have some control across that network, but there's really no media transport usually. It's just an island system. This is what IT wants. They think of AV as an extension of two paradigms they're already used to managing. One is their UCNC environment, so unified communications. And they think of it as also an extension of their telephony environment. And so when we tell them we have to run single instances of these things that we call appliances or little boxes, they're like, really? Do I really have to do it that way? That seems like so 1980 or 1990 at best. And so they want a, a more of an application server in the data center. And again, that's what that Dell server that we just announced is intended for. We're talking about not just five or six rooms, okay? We all, I think, just know that QSC gets that. That's where we're going to still keep building our other DSPs and control processors, because you're not going to always put a Dell server in a building that's only got two couple of conference rooms, are you? It's kind of silly. But we know that the enterprise IT is where it's at. And when we think of AV and IT convergence, it's really at the enterprise layer, that customer type. And so we think that there's a future for hybrid processing architectures, where you can still have a mix of some localized processing, like the products we sell today, the 110, the 510, you know, um, but then mix and match with some of the rooms hanging off solely uh, that Dell central server. And so we have a product we announced at the show, it's called the IO8 Flex, as an example of bringing an analog IO into a room without having local processing. But um, that room could look something like this. Notice how similar it looks to the original uh, picture. It's the same thing. Difference being is that now we have a true network solution that's matrixed with the Dell server in the central, in the data center. But here's where the industry is really going. We think that the role of analog I.O. in a conference room is being deprecated further and further and further. And it's making less and less sense to have this large hardware device even if it's a one rack U DSP in that room anymore, because all the endpoints are becoming IP. And whether that's an audio processing scheme or a control processing scheme or, or video switching, the network is more powerful than any of our AV specific uh, technologies like HD base T or, you know, uh, you know, analog audio or even uh, audio proprietary digital busing, all that stuff's over. And so when you th look at it this way, Look at that Shure microphone that you see, it's so cool. That won a great award, by the way, uh, just a couple nights ago. Those devices are gonna become more and more prevalent, and then they can hang off of the Dell server, which is handling all the other additional processing that's needed in that room. There's a lot of really smart people here at QSC that we're all looking out of the industry trying to understand how it's changing in real time. 
and we want to help in that process. And in fact, we hope this is a great down payment on that process. The fact that we are the first in the industry to really do this and come out with this great bridge uh, that you guys can use as a, a great tool to talk to IT now in a more meaningful way.